Okay. Hi, Subhash. Hello. Hi, Paul. Hello. Welcome to Film Companion South. Thank you. Uh, let me start with this question. Uh, we've been reading and you know understanding a lot of things about NFT for the last couple of years. Yeah. But can you remember the the occasion or the event with which you realized that okay, even in NFTs, there's a future that's connected to the entertainment business? Well, actually, I've been working in this blockchain industry for quite a long now, uh, maybe since 2015, 16. Okay. Um, and we did the first um, event with Vitalik Putin in Delhi. Hmm. Um, so um, this concept of NFT is slightly different from cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Because in cryptocurrencies, there is no asset linked to it. Correct. Yeah. So in NFTs, there is actually a copyright protected asset. For yeah. example, in your website, you might be using some videos or copyright protected, you know, um, photos or images or whatever you, yeah. you, 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 you're using on your website. So these things is, is tokenized. Mm -hmm. So this token here is a representation of that. Yeah. So ideally, we are already using it. So obviously, as long as there is a value for the cop the images or the copyright protected what whatever material you are using, obviously there is a demand, and so it's directly linked to the demand of that product. Does the demand de demand depend on the like? For instance, if you if you decide to go get the DNFTs of a particular film, yeah. does the popularity of the film decide the value of it, or is it different from that case? As in, it can be how rare it is to approach to get that particular rights. What are the criteria that decides the value? Yeah, I think exactly that's what it is. It depends on uh, which movie yeah. and you know if there is an exclusive um, content which is like a, maybe a promotional video which is exclusive for NFTs mm -hmm. or if there is an exclusive image which is available for NFT holders then it adds more value and these are all limited editions. Mm -hmm. So that's where the value uh, adds up. Yeah, and um, uh, this is slightly different from NFTs because this is more like a DNFT. Correct. This yeah. is like a decentralized NFT. Yeah. So people mint it. So they are not actually buying it from anybody. Hmm. They are actually minting it. Hmm. So they will be using whatever crypto they have to mint this from the blockchain. Hmm. And this, um, for example, if they are using Ethereum, uh, this Ethereum get blocked in a DeFi contract. Yeah. So whenever they burn, for example, there is 100 images which is available or 1000 images which is available and 1000 people bought it. Hmm. So that's a limited edition. Hmm. Now people, burn, if they don't want, they can burn it hmm. and then they get the, um, the asset backing ah, back. Correct. So what happens, the number again comes down. It becomes more exclusive. More exclusive. Okay. So that is the concept. Okay. But uh, I think you, uh, you started out, I mean, you, you own a company called Tech Bank, right? In yeah. London. And one of the first films that you chose to work with is Malakoti Valuban. That's right. Uh, is there any particular reason you wanted to start with this particular film? Well, I happen, I am a Malayali. Correct. So obviously, you know, um, the biggest movie yeah, for us, my roots yeah. are there. So obviously, I am a fan of uh, oh, Lalit. Yeah. And obviously, then Bollywood and every, everything comes. So yeah, so that was the first, you know, whenever you start an idea, you talk to your friends and colleagues and that was the first thing that came. And obviously, that was a big movie which is getting announced at that time. So that's okay. So we thought, okay, let's go for it. And we got the deal. So we said, okay, that's, that's the right thing to do. And we did it. Yeah. But tell me about this particular phase that we are at. Okay. It's people know enough about it to understand the legitimacy and uh, the importance of the, you know, this in the future. Yeah. But when we think about producers, when we think about people who own movies, yeah. we think that they are still people who work in a very old school met methodology, right? Yeah. So when you meet them and when you are trying to explain this business, when you are trying to explain what you are trying to create for them, are you at a stage where you need a lot of convincing for them to understand? No, it's actually very easy. Because, oh, nice yeah, idea, because yeah. the thing is like what they are currently doing is they are already selling these rights to different companies. Mm -hmm. For example, they are already selling the NFT rights of the whole movie to uh, these uh, OTT platforms. So yeah. if you actually look at the, the contracts, uh, it already covers NFT for the whole movie. Which but, is, but since when did they start doing that? Is uh, it, that's recently. Maybe in the last one or two years they started doing it. Okay. But it's part of the contract. So basically every production house is already selling it. Hmm. Now what they are not selling is the promotional videos and images mm. or all these posters and stills of the movies they, that's not part of the contract because th those are promotional materials so uh, they now they have an option to sell that also the okay. nft rights on that also and that's what we started buying now gradually we will be moving on to full ott rights and you know music rights and all those things mm. so it's just the beginning 
Hmm. How do you see it? Like when you're looking at the Indian movie industry and when you're looking at the possibilities of this for the movie business in India, how, how different is it compared to like how it would be in Hollywood or another European movie industry? Well, um, there are several key differences. One of them is just size of the market here. It's uh, much bigger. It's much bigger. I mean, it's, it's orders of magnitude bigger. If you're looking at the output of Hollywood per annum, um, it's over 1,500, and I've seen some numbers where it's even 2,000 per year. That dwarves Hollywood. Let's just uh, state that. Annual ticket sales in 2020 were around 2.7 billion. Again, orders of magnitude bigger than any other market. So the, the size here really uh, speaks volumes, and not just in ticket sales, but in revenue. So in 2020, revenue um, off of that many sales around 3.6 billion, with, for a global audience of around 3.7 billion. And it's growing. It had a little bit of sort of a dip during COVID. COVID, that's, that's naturally, to be yeah. Understood. It's recovering really nicely in double digits. And if you're forecasting it uh, to continue, and I think that's a safe thing to be able to do, by 2025, it's going to be $5 billion. And, um, you know, when you're speaking of scale like that, and that's the, the perspective I have uh, on it, uh, I think it differentiates it from any other market. Uh, and there's so much fertile soil for growth uh, within this um, uh, whole space because the international viewership is also growing. It's growing because th there's a diaspora um, of, of communities in the States or whoever that's watching it. And also domestically, as Subesh has just uh, alluded to, the growth of platforms mm -hmm. that are creating new revenue streams for digital content through streaming or downloading. And Bollywood is really good, uh, particularly uh, recently, with creating content that is wider in genre. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going after broader appeal, and it's also investing in more quality content with, with special effects, higher production values, again, uh, uh, increasing its appeal. And I think that it does something really unique where um, it's different because it really focuses on Indian culture, Indian values, but it does it with themes that are uh, universal. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that does it really well, probably uh, almost better than anybody else, and that's why it's, it's different, and I think it's, uh, it's really interesting. Yeah. So now what is the first stage? I hear that you've already, I mean, you've got Malayalam movies on board. Yeah. And I think even, I, I, I was reading a couple of your interviews, you were also talking about how the other South industries have kind of woken up to it. No? Yeah. You don't yeah. have to do a lot of explaining when you're trying to get uh, the producers on board. Yeah. What about the other markets? Well, actually, we have, re we have in the final stage of signing up a Hollywood movie. Hollywood movie. Yeah, and then we, um, we are in talks with many, you know, in Tamil, Telugu, and also Bollywood. So it's all in the final stages. And uh, one of uh, Mamuti's movies coming out um, next week, uh, which we have already signed the contract and everything. Uh, but other industries, very soon, probably in the next 30, 60 or 90 days, we'll be like signing up and we'll be announcing. But it's not ready to be announced yet. Announced which yet. Is still yeah. But what is the stage at which the business is at right now? When, when you're going to them, yeah. uh, now I think, like I, like I was reading in one of your interviews, uh, it's about how... People have already sold their NFT, their, their rights to other yeah. OTT businesses. Yeah. And now you're at that stage where, okay, it, the movie is almost close to production. I mean, the production is almost over. It's nearing release. Yeah. So how will this model change in the future? Is this a conversation that you will have with the producers even before the production starts of movies? Is that the norm in the future? Because that's how OTT business yeah. works, I'm yeah. guessing. Used to work, I think. It Used to work, yeah. Changed, yeah. yeah. But yes, that's what we want to uh, follow. So we'll be starting from the beginning itself. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, there will be a guaranteed revenue which we offer them. Yeah. So we actually buy out the rights. So that's like if even from the beginning you get something out of it. Yeah, the, produ then, the producers yeah. are directly yes. benefiting from that. Yes, yeah. so there, it's a new additional revenue source for them which yeah. did not exist previously. So yes, we'll be, we, 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 we love to participate with uh, them from the beginning so that we can also, we are also marketing their posters and uh, you know stills which is actually an added marketing effort for them. Correct. So it's like um, the cost we are spending on marketing is actually benefiting them. So it's a mutually beneficial thing. Correct. And w what is the next stage? Of course you buy a part of a film, right? Yeah. Of course the movie let's say is divided into five or six parts. Yeah. You own one part of it. Yeah. After that is it completely yours or does the producers have any say over the value of that increasing or decre decreasing after you after you guys take to take it over well um, it's like the ott thing so we buy out the rights 
So for the state it's completely yours. Right? It's, it's completely uh, belongs the to the yeah, yeah, it's a community actually. Yeah. It's a decentralized community. So it's mainly uh, currently we are buying out maximum rights from the Indian industry, and uh, there are European companies who are. Uh, who wants these rights so that they can tokenize and uh, you know uh, make revenue from it? So we sometimes sub license it to them, mm -hmm. so they you know create NFTs out of it. So it's like it's it's like OTT. So we are sub licensing and selling it. So it cannot be like uh, you know it has to be full rights. Otherwise, yeah. but they can still use it for promotional use because it's promotional materials. Everybody, like any platform has their promotional materials. These promotional materials can be continued to use, but uh, we are just buying the, the NFT owners. rights. Yeah. The NFT rights. Correct, just correct. to make the NFT out of it. Yeah. And uh, I, I read something very interesting about how the point that you were making about how, of course, the NFTs, you guys own the NFT rights, but the next stage of owning those rights is how these movies are going to get promoted internationally also because of this. Uh, yeah, because yeah. of this purchase. That's Can right. you explain that process? Like after you guys buy the rights, yeah. uh, how, how, does it, how does that movie or that promotional material of a particular movie travel outside the country? Yeah. So basically it's an international uh, DAO or decentralized autonomous community that is coming up. Okay. So it's like a film loving um, group or a community, international. So it's all now international. So there's no much happening in India. So it's all getting, you know, all these, you know, there are so many Indians outside and, you know, so many uh, people who, different movies are coming. So it's like it's getting into the, based on the content, even the international community, which non-Indian community is also getting into it. And when, if there is a good content from India, which is getting, which is capable of getting marketed in other other communities what happens is because of this it's in the community and when this new project comes everybody comes to know about it so that creates a curiosity okay i want to see what this is hmm. so it, so that promotional uh, benefit is like bringing a new audience to the entire indian film industry so can you uh, exp can you take the example of a particular movie and explain how this would work and when you're trying to buy the rights, yeah. how much of your judgment is involved in buying the right film for this? Well, it, uh, okay, now let, I need to put it um, in a different way. So let's let's work it reverse. For example, a movie like Titanic, Titanic. or um, Avatar. Yeah. So why did we watch it? Because yeah, everybody's seen that, the, yeah, yeah. We've seen the advertisement somewhere yeah. because they marketed it uh, for you know in globally and it reached out to every nook and corner of the world. Uh, but if you actually look at an Indian movie, is there any Indian movie which got marketed that way? Mm -hmm. So they are using the marketing channel. Now we don't have an op opportunity to market it the other way around, even if we have the content. Mm -hmm. So if they have the content, they have the opportunity to do it. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so not every Hollywood movie is getting marketed like that. So special content movies, you know, where there is like a curiosity for the entire yeah. humankind. It will work all over yes. the world. So, so what this will happen is when there is a decentralized community coming up, whose film loving community buying these NFT rights. So there is a community, for example, it's a 5 million community. So what happens is uh, when a good content movie, it gets marketed to this 5 million community which is getting created. Yeah. Uh, so everybody, okay, 5 million people are seeing this. Suddenly taking notice of a yes. new movie. And if, it's, if the trailer is uh, interesting, if the content seems to be interesting, then obviously it generates an interest for them to see. And these movies are anyway available, launched internationally. Yeah. And uh, they are also available on OTT platforms. Mm. So it, it brings in more viewers mm. and more people um, uh, to watch it. Correct. So that's, that's, how, that's, that's the concept. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. But at least at the stage at which we are in, mm. uh, uh, let's say there are two films. Yeah. Uh, one is a, a very, what do you say, a very specific to a culture, very specific to one industry type of a movie. Yeah. And on the yeah. other hand, you have a movie which you feel is like in that avatar titanic space, which yeah. can really travel outside the country. Yeah. Are we at the stage of the business where you would actually prefer the latter over the former? Or yeah. we're too early to decide which content will work? No, it's for the community to community, decide. Correct. For example, if the, if the community, if the demographic is like from all over the world and a content is specifically only addressing a certain community and only that, com that portion of the community will watch it correct. or they'll be interested in it. But if the content is more interesting and it's, it, it, uh, you know, it's for a wider audience, hmm. then if, uh, let's say, for example, if 5 million uh, community is there 
and only we are, the content is only appealing for a certain two lakh community, lakh people, yeah. Yeah, and only they will watch it. Correct. So it's going to be content driven rather than yeah. Uh, well, everything matters. So it's 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 about which part of this community you are able to uh, Market influence. Into. Yeah. Correct. Uh, what about when you are looking at the business as a as a as an audience as a yeah. as a fan? Yeah. Uh, let's say you are like like how you, we we are huge fans of Mohan, we are yeah. huge fans of Mammootty. Yeah. Uh, with the way it kind of works, is there an option for a, a regular layman to buy a part of the movie or the you know the superstar that they love? Yeah. Oh, see, that is exactly what it is, because the the, the entire business model um, across the world is changing from. A centralized uh, business model to a decentralized Correct. business model. It's called DAO or decentralized autonomous community. Yeah. So it's a community-driven thing, right? And it's empowering the uh, the actually the audience. The the regular person becomes. It's almost like a movie becomes a company, and we own the shares of it, yeah, right? Correct. Right. So that's right? so. And gradually, when this be, when this com concept become uh, you know grows, yeah. automatically the films will get you know will be produced for these community hmm. based on the demand which is coming from this community so it's a community so it's it's not about like profit and loss uh, which normally we do in a centralized company yes obviously that is there because we buy the rights and we supply and it or we sell it hmm. but it's more than that it's it's eventually it's going to be the community that's going to decide okay oh we we want that movie so we will pre buy it hmm. because if they, they mint an nft because that asset backing is already there Correct, yeah. they can use this nft to uh, watch any new film they can convert it to a ticket. Correct. So they are hold, these are people who are already holding the tickets. Now yeah. give me the content, I give you the money. Yeah. They, so they become the, like producers. Like yeah. Individually they get together and they can get the film exactly. that they want made. Exactly. And they are, it's like gift cards. <laughs> they are holding the money there. Yeah. Okay, it's great. Okay, I buy the ticket. Yeah, correct. So, you know, from the beginning itself, um, the revenue generation, the production, because the, the content production will change yeah. the quality of the production will change based on the demand that is coming from the community this community yeah uh, can you give me an example of okay how the price is what are the, what are the situations in which the prices that they hold in a particular you know for, for a particular asset yeah uh, how does it go up and go down based on does, yeah. does it get affected by the performance of the movie well uh, see um, it's not an investment yeah because what you're doing is you're just Okay, now five dollars. Hmm. You can mint a uh, GNFT. Yeah. So five dollars is, let's say, I don't know how much is for two hundred rupees or something or three hundred, whatever. A little more, four hundred yeah, rupees. Four hundred yeah. rupees. Yeah. Okay, so you are investing four hundred rupees and you're buying a ticket. That's four hundred rupees is just like you're learning. It's yeah. a process, so you can spend it on uh, you know movie or whatever it is. And you're not buying with cash. There's no option to buy with cash. Yeah. So what you're doing is, if you're already into crypto, because uh, then you mint with the crypto you have. Yeah. And once you mint it, you have two things now. One is the crypto which is backing it and the other thing is the uh, artistic value of it. Correct. So you cannot really say uh, up or down. It's based on the artistic value and also the asset that is yeah. backing it. So it's more from a, you know, a, a point of view where you are buying these artists. At what things. point in time also, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. But what is the best case scenario? Can you, can you tell me a best case scenario for a person who's just getting into it? Yeah. About what they can see, if something works out, how, it, how beneficial it will be for them? Well, the best case scenario is you own the tokenized mm. art. Yeah. That's it. That's the best, yeah, that's the best case scenario. Okay. Now the other thing is, what you can do with it is is something you know. It it depends. It can uh, you might be able to you know there'll be perks from the production houses. Yeah. You might be able to attend an event whether it's a it's a star night or a you know um, like a shareholders yeah, meeting. Yeah. Right? yeah. So like an award function or something, you might be able to. So it's an experience driven thing. Yeah. So it's not about the value five dollars. It's about what experiences you're going to get from this five dollars because we recently we did few events in Kerala yeah. where more Lelsar was there so few people who had the uh, DNFT yeah. came and attended so it was like uh, you know they, they were able to see him they were literally and, able to see the yes. yeah normally yeah. that's not possible because yeah. it's like limited um, you know audience but here uh, they were able to come and attend because they have the DNFT okay. so now how do you value that I so it's all, it's all about the experience they're getting. Yeah. But uh, this is a question to both of you. Uh, let's say we're still at that early stage of this business. But how do you see this business 
uh, changing in the next five five years. Maybe the this conversation that we're having might yeah. be very simplistic five years later. Yeah. But at, at that stage, how would you kind of see it growing and it will become the norm. Right? Everybody will know everything that we're discussing right yeah. now. So what is the future of the business five years from now? I think if the trend towards more tokenization uh, is going to continue. Um, more and more assets will be moving onto the blockchain. And because it is decentralized, uh, you're getting into the space of smart contracts. Yeah. So when it comes to an NFT, uh, you can create situations where there's a creator, uh, and whenever the NFT changes ownership, um, the royalties can be paid directly to him. So you're, you're achieving situation when there's complete transparency of transaction, revenue certainty, uh, and uh, from the biggest production houses to you know, uh, individual smaller creators, I think will appreciate that. Uh, and I think there is a very strong driver of a trend uh, moving forward. Well, exactly that. I'll try to simplify it a bit more, which is like, as we all know, we are in the Web 3 age. Hmm. Now, Web 1. The metaverse. And yeah, yeah, for people who don't understand, I'll just give a sure. small idea of what it is. Web 1 is internet, the initial internet, where you go onto a website and you can only read what is. There's no interaction. You can only read what, if it's an article published, you just read what is on that. That's called read only or uh, Web 1. Now, Web 2 is read and write, which is you can actually create an account like the Facebook account, your online banking account, Instagram account, but you are creating a username and password in a third party server and they hold it, they control it, they can block you anytime, you know, the data might get lost, so the privacy issue, everything is there in web 2, which is read and write. Now we are in, in a world called web 3, which is ownership. So you are not creating a username or password in any third party website. What you're doing is you're downloading a decentralized app like MetaMask, uh, Take Bank D Wallet, or uh, Clever uh, Trust Wallet. So many, it's like hundreds of them. Lots of content. Yeah. Yeah. So you download the decentralized app into your uh, mobile. Device, yeah. Uh, then you get a software in there. You create. There's a button which is so that's you. First step is one is download. Step two is you. There is a button called create account. When you create a username and password is created inside the hardware of your phone. It's not in any third party. And it's normally a phrase or a private key. You write it down because if you lose it, you lose it. <laughs> okay. So you have to, this is your forgot password. There's yeah. no forgot password option. Yeah. So this is your forgot, if you lose something forgot, you have to keep in your locker. Yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. if you lose it, you lose that account. You can create another account, but if you have something in there and you don't have, you, you don't have the backup, then you lose it. Yeah. Because it's not in third party. So, so now you own it. That's why it's called the ownership part. Yeah. So that's where you, the, the, the consumers now are now empowered, mm -hmm. where they, are, they own it, internet. So in internet, they own it. Mm -hmm. So NFTs or tokenized assets, it's in their wallet. They control it. They can send it to anyone. Only they can send it. Yeah. So that's how it works. So that world has come. So that means a community of 5 million people, for example, in India, the recent um, you know, survey says there is more than um, 120 million Web3 wallet users, the Web3 wallet users who own their own accounts, which is nearly 12. One tenth of the population, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that means already people are aware of it. So many people are aware of it and they're already using it. So now when they get an opportunity like this and if they come together, just imagine the power of that community. So it's going to be more community driven, Web3 based. Uh, um, opportunities which is going to come up. Yeah, and uh, plus when you talk about smaller films, smaller producers, right now it's at this stage where, okay, uh, 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 two to three films per industry have signed up for this. Yeah. But I think maybe in a couple of years, the norm is that every movie has already signed on. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, because see... Um, it's an income stream for them, right? Exactly, yeah. because... Um, so, let's say, let's talk about the production. Hmm. Now, currently in a, in a regional movie, when a production is happening, their primary focus is like, okay, we have a market here. So, this is our budget, which is limited. I need to... The production, the content need to be... Uh, everything needs to be limited to this budget, so that because I'm only going to get X amount of revenue from okay. this. So, this is how it works. Now imagine there is a 5 million uh, community there and they, the producers and the directors and the story writers know this community and know their you know, uh, requirements. They will start making stories, they will start making the production uh, quality will go up, the budget will go up because now they are addressing a larger market than a 
smaller market. Yeah. So, so that way the industry will totally change. So it's a total globalization of content that's going to happen. And if once, okay, let's say a few movies sign uh, on, yeah, yeah, sign on, and they become, uh, you know, this community really accepted it, then everybody will turn on. Oh, okay, now we need to uh, tap into that market. Yeah. So that market is getting created internationally. Yeah, uh, but I don't know how much you can reveal about this uh, next question. But then, uh, is there any numbers you can tell me about how much? Uh, uh, the rights are worth for a particular movie? Well, it depends on the movie. Yeah. Uh, so, because uh, certain movies are only made, made for a certain community. Mm -hmm. So, when you talk about that movie, it's you limited only to attract them. to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. because even though they are going to build a community, but that is not actually a movie for the whole community. Correct. Yeah. So, based on that, the pricing will vary. Yeah. And some sometimes we also work on a revenue share model where it's like a good uh, thing we, we work on that model also we, so it's it's currently flexible yeah it's too new to yeah. see how it will yeah. settle but once it develops then it's going to be uh, different because if, everybody will change because the way we buy will change hmm. the way they sell will change uh, the way they adopt adopt into this community will change the demands of the community will change so it's hmm. like a uh, you you cannot really say what is going to happen. The only Correct. thing you can say is okay, there is a five million um, uh, community New user base. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But at least uh, to get a, a somewhat of an understanding, let's say um, a movie has a hundred percent production budget. Yeah. Right now, at the at the rate at which these rates are getting sold, yeah. uh, can they take care of some part of that? Like, can 10, 15 percent of that uh, um, expenses come from this, or is it getting there? Yeah, yeah. Normally, yeah, definitely. I think that is that is, that a, is the future. That, that is the range we can say. Yeah. Because what we have to also look into what they're selling. They're only selling the promotional rights. Correct. Yeah. Uh, only the stills yeah. and uh, the promotional videos is what they, what they're selling. Yeah. Which currently has no value. Correct. Or it's not nobody. It's is a buying. new business. It's yeah, a it's new, new revenue product. stream. So yeah. it's yeah. So that's how uh, you know. So you cannot really say okay. Okay, now when we start buying the music rights and OTT, then it will really add up. Yeah, be, uh, different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this now I would like to ask as a as a person. I mean, uh, because uh, uh, what do you say? We we know about Mamuti, we know about Mohanlal, and we know them as people who are able to sense the trends before it even takes place, right? Yeah. Uh, it's something that we've grown up hearing. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, how they are the one first superstars in Indian cinema to start yeah. a website and all that back in yeah. 1998. Yeah. So when you're interacting with them and you, you're, mm. you're talking about uh, your interactions with them, uh, how are they uh, How are they seeing it? You know, how easy it is uh, for you to explain how things work for them and uh, how, how surprised are you that they already get it without uh, having to take so much effort to explain it to them? Well, my experience is that, is that they, they already know. <laughs> they already know the correct And not just uh, the Malayalam industry. Yeah. When I went to uh, the Telugu industry. For Pushpa too, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> they're already building a, uh, you know, Web3 metaverse. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different, so that's why I'm saying, like the metaverse experience, everything yeah. is going to be connected with this Web3 and NFTs. So, and DNFTs is the, is the key because DNFTs is like decentralized. Yeah. So, you, the, the consumer is like, okay, now what they are you doing wrong? Yeah. That's the kind of thing. Yeah. So, everybody already knows this. The industry already knows it. The production house is already, at least some in the production. Some they've already, yeah, they, yeah. they, they know, they are aware of all this, what is happening. Yeah. So, it, it was not that hard because, because the NFTs has already created a market. Yeah. So, DNFTs was easy. Correct. The yeah. only thing is the centralization part is removed. Yeah. And the decentralization is coming, which is empowering the consumer. Correct. Um, and the key difference between NFTs and DNFTs is that NFTs is uh, normally the asset, the whatever the copyright yeah. protector asset, it's in a centralized server. Basically, what that means is only one party owns it. Yeah. Is, is that correct to say? Uh, I don't know what exactly you mean, but yeah. um, token, if you own the token, you own it. Okay, correct. That's right. Yeah. But normally, the asset which is linked, hmm. the copyright material which is linked for yeah. an image, huh. uh, in an NFT, it's in a centralized huh, correct, server. Correct. Yeah. So if the server goes down, yeah. Yeah. You own the token, yeah. but your no backup use. asset yeah. is there, not yeah. there. Yeah. So now in DNFT, mm. this is also in a decentralized server. Okay. So your token is there and your asset is also decentralized. So Paul, can you tell us about how the budget budgets work for this? How does the, the funding work for this and uh, uh, how what is the next stage for that? Right, that's a great question. <clears throat> well, from our perspective, we have taken a view on the entire India market and also this asset class because we think it has... Uh, uh, a lot of merit going forward. 
and that is why we're backing Subash and his endeavor. Uh, we ourselves have earmarked a significant budget um, for this, uh, upwards of seven, maybe even eight figures. Uh, it's all down to the deal sourcing and the quality of assets that will come across our desk. We're definitely interested. We want to be looking at everything. There is a wealth of talent coming up. Um, and I think the talent that we are meeting has the potential to create international success blockbusters. And what we had last time here in India, uh, the good fortune to meet with somebody who was actually nominated as India's uh, official nomination to the Oscars. Oscars He's yeah. a fantastic caliber of, um, uh, of pieces of art. And we're very happy to contribute and work together with uh, the entire Indian film uh, industry and community. Uh, and I'll let basically Subash address the, the, rest, the, the, yeah. size, the size of the, uh, the endeavor. Well, I think uh, what he just said is a, it's a first example. Because when, when I came up with this concept, it was only like the first movie I bought and the second one was like the 2018 Oscar yeah. nomination. And um, when this got, uh, when I was pitching to somebody, then I came across, you know, uh, the uh, ES Global and I explained this and they immediately wanted to fund it and buy shares into the company. Hmm. So th that is where, you know, the future out, you know, outside India mainly, people are looking for contents, hmm. uh, which is copyright protected because there is a big market for tokenization of these. Hmm. Assets. When did you get involved in this? I mean, was it recent? We've been uh, looking at it for quite some time, uh, putting the deal together. Um, it's an ongoing process for us to, uh, to immerse ourselves uh, within this space. Um, from our UK uh, perspective, we are involved in uh, multiple verticals from uh, being in the, the loyalty space, uh, being in um, uh, payments to retail and we're looking at synergies between all of the assets that uh, we're, we're curating and uh, this I think was just a natural fit and it's an ongoing conversation as to the degree which to, uh, we want our involvement to be but it's definitely with, uh, with the view to increase, increase that uh, exposure. Uh, okay and my last question about this is uh, of course now we understand how this works and you know uh, uh, the future. Uh, what are you seeing as apart from entertainment, apart from the movie business, how do you see this getting into music? Uh, artwork, I think it's already quite famous, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe other fields of entertainment. What is the next stage for the other uh, art forms? Obviously, we are in talks with different IPL players. Yeah. And Maxwell, if you know, they okay. already have a platform in Australia where, you know, they are doing this. Yeah. So, obviously, uh, in other cricket and other fields, although this is also, this is going to come, but it's, it's, it's coming, but it's going to take some time. Yeah. And in India, where do you think, where do you see this going? Is it again cricket? Is it, do you think, do you see this going uh, forward in the sports arena or is it outside of cinema? Like, where do you see this going? Well, I think it's going everywhere. Yeah. Because Reserve Bank of India has started a Web3 wallet. Yeah. Which is the digital, uh, you know, the I, I, crypto in rupee. Correct. Yeah. Uh, which is, obviously, it's controlled by the central bank. But it's in the Web3 format where you control your private key and the assets, It's the transaction is done by you. So obviously Web3 is like, you know, like the Instagram or the new social media, which was not there before. When it came in, it took over everything. Yeah. In the same way, uh, when you have control, why would you give the control to a third party company? Yeah. You don't have an option now, so you give now. Correct. Yeah. When you have an option. See, that is the reason why Facebook has changed its name to Meta. Meta, yeah. Because Web3 is coming. So no country can block it. For example, India has signed the G20 uh, agreement. So it's not going to go away. It's only going to be, you know, uh, regularized and it's going to improve. Yeah. And people are going to adopt it. Currently, the only challenge for Web3 is that not many people know how to use it. Yeah. It was like... Uh, you know, internet uh, back you in the internet. 90s. Or yeah. Let's say Facebook. I yeah. used to use Facebook. Yeah. Now, when Instagram came, okay, I really didn't know how to use how it. How to forget because that? Because I'm already yeah, some yeah. used to it. My yeah. friend circle is already there. Yeah. Why should I take effort to learn? There's a resistance. Yeah. New thing. Yeah. So that same resistance is here, mm. but that's a 15 years gap. Every 15 years, a new community, new generation, <laughs> which is coming out from the schools because they learn it from the school. Yeah. And they come up with they they in a different vibe. You can call yeah. like. So we were awkward wife, Facebook <laughs> wife, Insta yeah. wife, High now five. Web3 yeah, wife yeah, is yeah. coming. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much. I mean, it's really exciting to hear about this and to see how the world is going to change in the next five, maybe five, ten years. 
Yeah. Even, for, even sooner. Even, even sooner, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And thanks so much because for telling us. Because it's already changed outside India. Yeah. Correct, correct. And looking forward to seeing where this goes in the future. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks so much.